Can this D-backs team do what the 2015 Kansas City Royals did and get back and win the World Series a year after losing it and biggest offseason needs to get the D-backs to the 2024 World Series? All on today's Locked on Diamondbacks podcast. You are locked on Diamondbacks, your daily Arizona Diamondbacks podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked on Dimebacks podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day listening to who? Always charismatic host of this podcast, Miller Thomas. Please go check out my website, millerthomas24.myportfolio.com to see all my latest work. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. And thank you for making Locked on Dimebacks your first listen every day. I would not be able to do this podcast without you, my loyal listeners, sharing, subscribing, reviewing, doing all that so I could do this podcast for you. Thank you. It's free and available on all platforms, so please continue to tell your friends. And on today's podcast, we're going to be talking about the biggest offseason needs for the D-backs. Can the D-backs pull off what the 2015 Kansas Royal Kansas City Royals did and get back to the World Series and win the World Series a year after losing it? But I first want to talk about how even after the D-backs lost the World Series, I know everyone is feeling dead. I, not dead. <laughs> feeling down. Not dead. Everyone's feeling down. Maybe you are feeling dead after you know that that tough last three games of the World Series you had to watch. But I know everyone is feeling down and sad, but I just want to talk a little bit about why there's no place to go but up for the D-backs and why everyone should be feeling optimistic about the D-backs moving forward, about their future, because like we've been saying all postseason, this D-backs run, it was so great because this D-backs team exceeded expectations when you consider the opponents that they played every round. Entering each round, you would have said, yeah, Brewers are a better team than the D-backs. The Dodgers are a better team than the D-backs. Phillies, Rangers, all the same. And they beat those first three opponents. They exceeded expectations. And when they got to the World Series, we said, whoa, this team is way ahead of schedule. Now, that doesn't excuse losing the World Series because you always have to capitalize on the moment. But this D-backs team was not built to make the World Series in 2023. They just got so hot and started playing baseball at the right time that they ended up in the championship series um, without ever expecting to be there. So even though the D-backs lost the World Series, I want to talk about why this D-backs team has no place to go but up from there and reasons to be optimistic that they could get back to the World Series in 2024. The first main reason, or just the first reason, very young core that should only be getting better. The D-backs are one of the younger teams in baseball, definitely top half in the league. Their average age is like 27, 28 years old. And really, when you look at the core of the best D-backs players, a lot of them are young, right? Gabriel Moreno, first season with the D-backs, first full season in the big leagues, 280 average, 740 OPS, and just played stellar defense behind the plate. Arguably the best defensive catcher in baseball, only 23 years old. If he taps into another level of offensive ability like we believe he has because we think he can be one of the best pure hitting catchers in Major League Baseball. Maybe he's not like a 30 home run guy, but he could be 15 home runs, 15 stolen bases with like a 290 average and just do damage in the middle of your lineup. There's a reason Tori Lovello moved him up to number three in the lineup in the postseason because this is someone that is super clutch. And when he's in the lineup and swing the bat well, it feels like the D-backs are um, just that much better. So Gabriel Moreno, 23 years old, if he gets just 10 to 20% better, that will be huge for the D-backs. Someone like Geraldo Perdomo, 23 years old, 
he's already made massive strides in his game. Entering the season, I was like, yeah, he's probably just another Nick Ahmed. Doesn't do anything for you offensively, but a good defensive shortstop with a little bit of wheels. I was like, yeah, he's a, he, he at this point is a younger Nick Ahmed, a little bit more mobile, but doesn't really do that much different than what a Nick Ahmed would give you. That was kind of my feeling entering the season. And little did I know, Perdomo, all-star season this past year and in the postseason he was really good as really good at well really good as well um at one point he had like a what like a five six game postseason hitting streak it was either like six or seven games like Geraldo Perdomo was really good for the D-backs the first half of the season and then heated up at the right time in the postseason and he's only 23 years old I like Thomas another dude 23 years old a lot of ups and downs his first couple of years in the big leagues with the D-backs but in the postseason, came through in a big way with the power, hitting home runs. Not something he really did for the majority of his career, but he's still only 23 years old, and this is someone who was one of the better prospects in the D-backs organization. So I still don't think we've seen the best of Alec Thomas yet. Then, of course, the rookie of the year, Corbin Carroll, only 22 years old, and considering in his first season in Major League Baseball, he's a 25 home run. 54 stolen base, almost a 900 OPS guy, 116 runs. Like this guy, that's his first season in Major League Baseball. I have to believe he can get better. And then even in the rotation, Zach Allen, 27 years old. Brendan Fott, 24 years old. We'll see about the Ryan Nelsons, but he's in his mid-20s. So is the Tommy Henrys. So is the Dre Jamisons. Like this D-backs team and the core of this team is just so young. And even the older players, the vets on this team, the Merrill Kellys, the Christian Walkers, like Christian Walker, even though he's, how old is he, 32 years old, he's still arbitration eligible. That's how young he is in terms of his, uh, in, in terms of his major league service time. Merrill Kelly is in what, his like fourth season in major league baseball? Let me double check. Fifth season in major league baseball. So it's not like he's been around like 10 years despite being in his early 30s, like Merrill Kelly is still pretty fresh. Christian Walker is still pretty fresh for considering their age. So the core of this D-back team is still very young. And if any of those guys get better entering next season, this offense can hit another level that we didn't even see in 2023. And then the second reason why we should still be feeling optimistic about this team moving forward most of the young players on this team, most of the core of this team, either locked up or arbitration eligible. When you go up and down, Alec Thomas, arbitration eligible, of course. Christian Walker, another year of arbitration before he hits free agency. Corbin Carroll, lock, <coughs> excuse me, locked up like the next seven to eight years. Keto Marte, locked up the next few years. Merrill Kelly, locked up the next couple years. Zach Allen, still under arbitration like most of this D-backs team, most of their best players, when you look up and down their lineup, the Morenos, the Walkers, the Martes, the Domos, the Carols, the Thomases, like are the all those guys are either under contract for the next few years or are still arbitration eligible. Christian Walker is the only guy who has like one year left that makes you a little bit nervous, but everyone else locked up. Zach Allen still got a couple more years of arbitration. Merrill Kelly under contract for at least two more years. So it's like everyone who was critical to this D-backs team this past season is not going anywhere for the foreseeable future. Number three, this team might spend some money for once. Ken Kendrick has been talking. He went on the Burns and Gambo show saying, you know what? Since the D-backs had this deep postseason run, they made a lot more money than they expected. He might finally open up his purse and spend some money. That is from the words of Ken Kendrick. And if that happens, Woo. Now, I don't know what that means. Does that mean you're just going to spend, you know, uh, does that mean you're going to look at players with like a 15 to 18, $20 million price tag? Or does that mean we're actually going big fish shopping with someone like Shohei Otani on the market? I can't really expect the D-backs to get in that kind of dance, but there were rumors that the D-backs were interested in Xander Bogarts last season. And of course, he signed that massive deal with the San Diego Padres. So I wonder if this, offseason if the D-backs do try to give someone 15 to 20 a year or maybe you just sign multiple dudes to 12 to 15 and really try to round out this roster maybe you go for one big fish or three really good fish I don't know the best way to say that analogy but 
I do want to see the D-back spend some money this offseason, and maybe they could turn into a little free agent destination. Baseball is one of those sports where I truly believe it does not matter about the market size. Free agents just care about the bag. But thankfully, the D-backs are a large market in terms of a media market. And listen, Arizona is not the worst place to live in. You got beautiful Scottsdale. It's currently November. I'm still wearing shorts and a tank top because 85 degrees outside. Like Evan Longoria and a lot of players have houses here in the offseason. Like why not come play in Arizona? And you're going to be in a retractable roof. You won't even feel the desert heat. So that's the number three reason because the team might actually spend some money this season. And then the last reason why we should be optimistic about this team still moving forward on our chances to get to the World Series next year, there is more young talent on the way. This team is not even done infusing with young talent because you still got Jordan Lawler, who was on the roster this postseason. He really did nothing, right? We barely saw Jordan Lawler. He had like he had that one at bat, and then what was it, like game four where he drew a walk? Like, that was about all Jordan Lawler did. He didn't make much uh, this postseason, but um, was that game four or was that game two? I don't even remember when I saw Jordan Lawler in the World Series because it was not that significant when we saw him. But he's going to get potentially a full season next year on the D-backs roster, like Jordan Lawler playing maybe shortstop, uh, maybe move Perdomo to third base. I don't know, but a potential full season of Jordan Lawler. We'll see how much that helps the D-backs. Drew Jones, he's not around the corner. But still, if he is the guy that he was drafted to be, or at least 80% of what he was expected to be, and he comes up in the next two to three years, like that could be a massive upgrade in addition to the lineup as well. If you want to talk about dudes who could be on the team in the near future, Ivan Melendez and De Los Santos are both third basemen in double A right now and talk to Lindsey Crosby of Locked On MLB Prospects. He likes those guys a lot. There's some uh, some potential rotation guys with the human lens, maybe the Blake Walstons of the world. Like, There's still so much young talent for this D-backs team that we barely saw this past season. Like, Maybe you get more Slake Coney and Bryce Jarvis next season. Like, I don't know. But there's still so many young dudes in the farm system that we haven't even added to the roster that haven't even made an impact for the D-backs yet. The D-backs still have one of the best farm systems in Major League Baseball. And if you add that talent to what we already have on the Major League roster, this could be one of the scariest teams to face over the next few seasons. Now we'll talk about if the D-backs can be the 2015 Royals, get to the World Series next year, and get their redemption, and if you think the D-backs can do that, why not place a little futures bet on FanDuel Sportsbook because score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. My favorite thing to do is the same game parlay. And guess what, guys? It's also basketball season. So when the Lakers are playing, I like to take the Lakers money line, the over on LeBron James points because he's still the GOAT despite being in year 21, and the over on AD rebounds. And sometimes that hits, sometimes it doesn't. But when it does, I like adding a little money to my pocket. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Welcome back into the Locked on Diamondbacks podcast. If you like the podcast, please follow Locked on Diamondbacks on YouTube. Hit subscribe and please look up Locked on Diamondbacks on both Twitter and Instagram for the show handle. And I'm just now realizing I spelled the word can wrong on my graphic. It says C-N-A. The A is supposed to be before the N. It's supposed to say, can the D-backs pull off the 2015 Kansas City Royals, what they did? Because that's what I want to talk about right now. Because I don't know if you guys remember, but the 2014 Royals got to the World Series. They lost. But then the very next season, in 2015, they were able to redeem themselves and they won it. And I want to compare the D-backs to the Royals because the 2015 and the 20, the 2014 and the 2015 Royals 
I believe, are very reminiscent of what we've seen with the D-backs this past year. And just kind of remind me of the D-backs overall. The 2015, excuse me, I'm going to keep getting these dates wrong. The 2014 Royals were an 89-win wildcard team that lost in seven games to the Giants. But it was a super improbable run when you consider their history. This was a team that had not been to the postseason since their last World Series, like 30 years earlier, and the lack of offense in 2014. This Royals team on paper was not very good in 2014. Look at their lineup. I don't think they had one everyday guy with at least an 800 OPS. Their rotation was good. Their bullpen was good. But on paper, it was a pretty average team. The runs per game, league average, slightly below league average. Like There was nothing special about that 2014 Royals team, but they were able to make a run all the way to the World Series. But the very next season, the 2015 Royals, a year after losing the World Series, brought back pretty much the same lineup, and all the dudes who had a taste of the World Series in 2014 had a better year the next year. I'm hoping... The same can happen to this D-back team. I'm hoping getting that World Series experience unlocks a different level of confidence. Knowing you were on the heels of being the best team in baseball, I'm hoping this D-back team just goes into next year with a different level of swagger. They already had swagger. Guys like Carroll, Ketel Marte, Christian Walker already had swagger. Tori Lavello was already keeping receipts and was like, listen, we're going to take you guys out just because you don't believe in us. I'm hoping next year the D-backs can play with the same chip on their shoulder. Now, I don't think people are going to be taking the D-backs for granted. Now that you went to the World Series, you can't just play the underdog card every game, I think. I think once you're the World Series runner-up, teams are going to have a little bit more respect for you entering next season. But when I look at the formula for the offense, for how the Royals won in 2014, it's very similar to what the D-backs did this past season. It's the main reason why the 24, why the 2014 and 2015 Royals feel so reminiscent of this D-backs team and reminds me so much of this D-backs team, specifically the 2015 Royals, because that team that won the World Series, they, their offense was basically the same as what the D-backs did this past season. A lot of sacrifice hits, a lot of stolen bases, and a lot of non-home run extra base hits. The Royals finished second in steals and second in batting average and third in doubles. This was a team that played exactly like how the D-backs did this past season because the D-backs were not a big home run hitting team, but they did get a lot of doubles and triples because of their speed where they did finish second in the National League, I think, in stolen bases. And they did hit for a pretty solid average as well. So like the 2015 Royals basically had the same offense that the 2023 D-backs did. Now, the only difference between those two teams from a pitching perspective, I think the D-backs rotation right now is better than the one that the Royals had in 2015. Now, the Royals did have an elite bullpen, so the D-backs can still improve in that area, even despite what we saw from the D-backs bullpen this postseason, right? Because the bullpen was pretty nasty for the D-backs this past year, um, at least in the postseason, except when we got to the World Series. But I think we can still improve in the bullpen, we can still improve in the rotation. I think the lineup is already as good as the Royals 2015 lineup, and that can still be improved as well. This D-backs team can go out there and add pieces to this team. I don't see why they couldn't come back and be in the World Series mix again next season. The Phillies obviously didn't make it back this year because, of course, the D-backs took them out, but I love what they did this offseason. They didn't just sit on their hands after going to the World Series, you know, last year. What did the Phillies do? They went to the offseason and they spent big money on Trey Turner, who had an all right regular season, but then turned it up in the postseason. And you went out and added to the rotation, in the bullpen a little bit as well. I love what the Phillies did this past offseason. And I hope the D-backs can look at what the Phillies did and say, you know what? Let's not sit on our hands and let's add to the core that we already have. The 2015 Royals also came back and won 95 games the very next season. And they also won that division that year. I think that I think this D-backs team next season could be in the 90 plus win category and also win the division. Because as I'm currently looking at the NOS, 
the Dodgers are always going to be a dangerous team. I'm not going to disrespect the Dodgers, but after playing them in this year's postseason and even the regular season, I don't think the D-backs are going to ever fear that Dodgers team ever again with the nucleus that they currently have. Uh, The Giants are trotting out a new manager once again, right? I believe they are. Um, And they... We just don't know the ceiling of that Giants team. I think we do know. They don't really have a high ceiling. That's a high floor team. They have good major leaguers, but they don't have stars on that Giants team. The Padres, they are loaded with stars. They're kind of the opposite of the Giants. But the problem with the Padres, they are taking out loans to make payroll. The Padres team, that organization is kind of a mess right now. They just keep paying dudes. They keep adding to that payroll, but they're not getting the production on the field. The Padres, I still like as a bounce back team for next year, but right now they are currently a mess. Then the Rockies are still the Rockies. I'm sorry, Paul Holden of Lockdown Rockies. I love you, buddy, but um, you guys are going to be in the basement once again. So overall, the NL is still loaded with teams like the Dodgers. The Braves, I think, are going to be right back there again next season. I still think they have the best team in baseball on paper. The Phillies, that lineup, so one of the scariest in the sport. Then teams like the Marlins are on the rise as well, so I can't count them out. But now that they fired their executive, um, I really didn't like that move, and I think that could really backfire on the Marlins this offseason and next year. But a great offseason for the D-backs, and there's no reason that they can't be in the World Series again next year. And we'll be talking about who the D-backs need to target this offseason to get back to the 2024 World Series next. All right, all right, all right. Let's get back into the Lockdown Dimebacks podcast. Let's talk about the D-backs' biggest offseason needs. Because like we talked about, it seems like Papa Ken Kendrick is finally going to open up that purse. It's something that I've been wanting for for so long because, listen, you can do what the D-backs did this past year and have a magical runway get to the World Series as one of the lowest payrolls in Major League Baseball. But there's a reason why it's called a Cinderella run. There's a reason why when you look at the other teams in the postseason in the Final Four, the NLCS, the Astros spend money. The Phillies spend money. The Rangers have spent money. Like, yeah, the D-backs had that Cinderella run, and it would have all felt validated if they won the World Series. But you know who came through for the Rangers those last couple games? Corey Seager, who got a $300 million contract by the Rangers, World Series MVP. Then Marcus Simeon woke up in that finale. He also got himself a mega deal. John Gray was great out the pen, uh, covering for Max Scherzer. So it's like, The Rangers paid a whole bunch of dudes, and those dudes came through in the biggest way in the postseason. Look how Bryce Harper has revitalized that uh, Phillies offense and what they've been able to do. They keep spending money, and guess what? They've been in the Final Four the last two years. You do need to spend money in sports. It's great when you have a low payroll team and have this Cinderella run, but if you want sustained and consistent success, you have to have a payroll, unfortunately. Maybe not top three, but I think at least the top 10 payroll in Major League Baseball would benefit this D-backs team greatly. So what do they need this offseason? I didn't even necessarily rank the needs, but we're going to talk about the biggest needs. Number one, they need another starter in that rotation. Everyone pounded the D-backs for having that... uh for having the bullpen game in game four. And listen, I don't love the bullpen game either. I would much rather have a number four starter. I think the discourse was way too far on what the D-backs were doing with their game plan. But I do agree, D-backs need a number four starter. And not even a due to be slotted into that number four rotation, but the D-backs need another starter. And realistically, I want someone that could be a very high-end number two Uh maybe masquerade as a number one if Zach Allen or Merrill Kelly gets hurt because I don't think the D-backs need to go out there and spend $25 million a year or however much Blake Snell is going to get. If there was like a Max Scherzer or a Jacob deGrom, I don't think they have to go after those guys. The kind of guy that I do want, who I think is going to be a free agent, like a Jordan Montgomery type, like what we saw from the Texas Rangers, like a nasty Nate Evaldi or Jordan Montgomery, are the types of pitchers that I want the D-backs to go out there and add to their rotation. Neither one of those guys is a true number one. 
but they can pitch like a number one in the postseason in a big game. Those guys came through for the Texas Rangers, and they're just really good pitchers. Those are really good number two, elite number three starters. And if I could put like a Valdi Montgomery type right behind Merrill Kelly, right ahead of Brandon Fott in the rotation, and then my rotation is Gallon Kelly, just for the sake of argument, Jordan Montgomery, and then Brandon Fott. I would feel so good about this D-backs team. Imagine if it was Montgomery in game three, and then instead of a bullpen game, you had Brandon Fott out there. The complexion of this series might have been different. The D-backs might be World Series champions. So I think getting another rotation starter is just so important. Having depth is always so important in the postseason. The D-backs did have a whole bunch of rotation starters when they entered the year with the Ryan Nelsons, the Fox, the Tommy Henrys, the Dre Jamisons, right? But Dre, Tommy John, Tommy Henry, he's out. Ryan Nelson was not good. And it was all on Brandon Fott, who, give him credit, was not good in the regular season, stepped up in a big way in the postseason. But I still want to see another dude in that rotation, a legit dude in the rotation for another postseason run. Next need, third base. The D-backs need a better third baseman. Now, if you do a full season of Jordan Lawler, could you do more? Geraldo Perdomo at third base? I don't know, but D-backs need to figure out that third base. Evan Longoria was just not good this postseason. He had a couple good defensive plays, but offensively did not do a lot. Manny Rivera, the first couple months, was really good offensively for the D-backs, but it's a lot of just singles and doubles and not really hard contact, not really any power. I would love to just get someone that's good over there. I don't need a superstar to play third base, but Give me another Eduardo Escobar type, right? Someone that can smash 30 home runs, 270 average, 800 OPS, be a middle of the lineup uh, guy, but not someone that's going to break your big, right? Someone that's like Candelario, who I think is going to be a free agent as well. Having a really, just came off a really good season. Not elite, but 807 OPS, 20 plus home runs. Like just someone that is good. Like the Lords Gurriel, Tommy Pham of third base. Get me someone like that to play third base for the D-backs next season. And speaking of which, I think the D-backs need to bring back one of the Tommy Pham or Lords Gurriel. I probably prefer Tommy Pham, despite being in his mid-30s. I think he runs a little bit better than Lords Gurriel. And I trust his bat a little bit more as well. Now, if it was Gurriel as the answer that the D-backs want to bring him back, I wouldn't mind that as well. He was with us from day one. So clutch in the first half of the season. Love the energy he brought. I think both of these guys bring something to the locker room, but different. There's like a like a stoic veteran leadership with Tommy Pham, and then there's like a more fun, lovable, positive energy with Lords Goriel. Love both of what they bring intangibly to this D-backs team, and both of them have a pretty good bat as well. So I would like to see one of those two guys come back to the D-backs next season. Next need... The D-backs need to add a big bat this offseason. I do think we do need at least one legit slugger added. And I don't know who that is. I don't. I haven't exactly deep-dived into the free agent list. We'll be doing that next week on specific free agents the D-backs should target. But someone like a Kyle Schwarber, who is not the most expensive player in Major League Baseball, someone that you could get on like a shorter three, four-year deal, just someone like that, maybe like a if he can repeat the success of what we just saw this past season, like a JD Martinez, like that would be someone really nice in the middle of your lineup to play DH Kyle Schwarber. Obviously he's not a free agent or anything like that, but just someone of that elk, someone that could come in in the middle of your lineup, someone that opposing pitchers fear because with one swing of the bat, he can change the complexion of the game. I would love a true big bat to be slotted in maybe in that number four slot, like maybe move Christian Walker down to the number five hole. If you could find a legit cleanup hitter. So I would like another big bat in the middle of this D backs lineup. And then of course relievers, you can never have too many relievers always could use more high leverage relievers. Seawald is going to be the closer next year. Ginkgo has that number eight. Uh, it has that eighth inning lockdown. Can we find a shutdown seventh inning guy? I don't know if those guys really exist anymore. It's just kind of all based on situation at this point, but I could use another lefty. I could use a couple more dudes that throw really hard, a couple more strikeout artists. Just always can improve the pen. So if the D-backs can go out there and improve the bullpen this offseason, that is always a major need for every Major League Baseball team. So the D-backs answer those questions and concerns. I don't see why this team can't be the World Series representative for 2024. 
Now that's it for this edition of the Locked On Dimebacks podcast. Come back next week for more Dimebacks news coverage and insight. Thank you for making Locked On Dimebacks your first listen every day. Um, if you want to see more content by me, just follow me on Twitter at CreativeThomas24 for my personal account or look up Locked On Dimebacks both Twitter, Instagram for the podcast handle. And as always, stay safe, stay healthy. Doses.